Segment Pad here. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different and I'm in my kitchen, but no, it's not a cooking product like I did a while back. Though I do want to get back to reviewing Kmart products. They're just so cheap and yet so functional. In any case, uh, today we're talking about home automation or the tech and I want to specifically go through the tech I have in my home. And I wanted to share with you what I'm actually doing to automate my home. There's actually not that many things, but I had a conversation with a fellow flight passenger a little while back about tech at home and you know what, they gave me the idea to do a bit of a, hey, this is what I'm doing and it's not over the top. Now I know that our channel's specifically made for home automation projects, um, that's not what this is about. I wanna share with you what I think is probably a reasonable amount of tech in your home, maybe a little bit more than most people, and it's not actually that expensive. And I'll tell you what the ridiculously expensive things are versus what I think you could get for really cheap. Now, a lot of these products I purchased myself, so um, I'll tell you when that is the case. So let's start with the first thing, the intro. Let's roll it. Now let's start with the brains of the operation and this household is a Google household because I got this Google Home right here. It's a fairly small screen, but I really, really like it. It's in the kitchen, it shows a bunch of photos that are from my Google Photos account and we get to sort of look at it when we're in the kitchen cooking and go, oh look, remember when we were thin and without kids and having fun? In any case, the brains here controls everything else in the home. Google has created a pretty incredible ecosystem of integrations. Well, what does that mean? Well, you can buy different products and different brands and they can still communicate with the hey and then the word Googs after. I'm not gonna say it because it's gonna turn on. And you can communicate with these products. Most products will have an integration with Google because of how big they are. But what do I use this for outside of communicating with other products, which we'll get to in a moment? Well. I ask it to show me recipes. I ask it to show me uh, the time because sometimes I can't look at it. It says the time. It's actually quite useful when you're somewhere else in the room. Secondly, and uh, probably the most important one is translating pounds to kilos and milliliters to ounces and things like that. I don't know if that works out, but anyway, it's really good to translate recipes. Hey, how much is this and how much is that? And multiplication. Sometimes, well, you know, if I want to multiply a large number, it's really useful. It's not expensive. It's about 250 to $150 depending on that size and it's got a speaker too to play music and that's probably 90% of the things we use it for and to go hey can you play some music and it plays music through my YouTube premium account that I pay for which has YouTube music and ad free YouTube. Now once it's integrated I can communicate with other products so let's have a look at some other products that I'm using to again automate my home and the reason I say automate is actually because I don't think it automates that much but it's a little bit more than just manual. While we're in the kitchen, let's talk about dishwasher. It's on right now, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but these guys come with an app and you can connect it up to your Google account also. What does that actually get you? Nothing much apart from saying, hey Googs, you can start the dishwasher, which is stupid because you've got to completely fill it, put the tablet in, turn it on, and then turn on remote start, which you can then turn on automatically through the app, but why? You still need to pack the whole thing before you go. I don't really recommend buying anything like this to do with apps or basically automation. It makes no sense. In the lounge, I have our aircon, and the cool thing about this one, and it's fairly new, a couple of years, is that it can integrate with Google, which means I can tell it to set a certain temperature in a certain room. The thing is, it doesn't work as well, and the only thing I use it for is to turn it on and off. So, hey, Googs, turn on the aircon. Works really well if I'm in the room and my hands are busy, can't press it. Otherwise, not useful, and it's not something I'd say, go out and buy one that has an integration into Google. But if you do have one that has an app, make sure to get it. And one comment about apps with these devices, they're usually trash. The apps hardly have work, disconnect, reconnect. You have to get an extra Wi-Fi module then adds complexity to the whole system. Wi-Fi systems for aircons, generally pretty bloody frustrating, but if you can get one that works, shouldn't be too bad. So the lounge TV, this is connected up to the Wi-Fi and it is Google connected as they say, which means I can play content from my phone or my device onto the speakers on here. 
Or I can say, hey, Googs, turn on this app. I've never used it. I've used it once to show someone how cool it is, and I've never used it. So if you're ever thinking about, oh yeah, I can control my TV with my voice, I don't know, I don't think it's a thing. At least I say, hey, you know, Googs turn on the TV, but then you gotta specify which TV, so like lounge room TV and so on, which can get a little bit frustrating instead of just grabbing the remote and turning it on. And this is where we get to more of the home automation part. These right here have little motors and they will be able to close when I say, hey Google, close the curtains. Now I'm in another room, so hopefully it heard me, but these should shut. Ah, there we go. Well look, I didn't buy these, I got sent them for review. I did a review, I really like them, but at $150, I don't think I would recommend this for every single window in your house. They're really cool, I get them opening at 7 a.m. and closing at 7 p.m. It's fun, but it's not a necessity. And is it really functional? Yeah, it works. And the way the battery charges, it has little solar panels that go in when they need a charge. But the battery dies before the solar panel charges anyway, so it only lasts about a month before you gotta take them off and charge them with a USB cable. Or what I've been doing is a battery bank to the bottom, I let it hang there until it's charged. Really cool, is it useful? Yes, when it's fully automated. That's the automation part, where I don't have to say anything to Googs, and it just does it at 7 p.m., 7 a.m., and so on. On. I kind of like it, $150. This little thing right here is just a temperature gauge, but it is connected to the hub from the same brand, SwitchBot, that makes the curtain closing motors. What's useful about it? Well, I get to see the temperature on my app and can activate other things based on that temperature. What do I activate? Well, I have it set that if it ever goes to 35 degrees inside, then you know, close the curtains. It's actually quite useful. It hasn't happened yet, not really necessary, but it's nice to have it connected to something else. Now, behind that sensor, I have the first Wi-Fi 6 device in the house, which is a Macusis unit, it's a node, that is just powered and it sits behind the TV and provides Wi-Fi for this side of the house. I have three in my home. One is literally the one that has the internet connected. There's another one in the lounge room near that kitchen that we just saw. And then there's this one here. It provides Wi-Fi 6 mesh all around the house. And I would highly recommend something like this for anyone who's got low Wi-Fi signals around the home. A mesh device will definitely fix that and it's not a lot of money. This is about 200 to $300 and Australian by the way. And it means that you have Wi-Fi coverage around the whole house. And as you walk around the house, the Wi-Fi will automatically reconnect to the closest node. Highly recommended. Mercusis is a TP-Link brand, so it's pretty good. Um, I've had no trouble with these guys at all. And on the back, you do have two Ethernet ports, so you can actually connect hardwired devices to it. I've got a PlayStation 5 just here. I thought I could just wire it up, but really there's no need with PlayStation 5s. Plus, I don't really play online, I just play some single-player games. And so, I really recommend this. Before we go on to my next favorite home automation, I gotta give a shout out to this cup. It's an Ember cup, and no, not sponsored or anything. It was a gift out for Christmas. I really love this. I just got a notification saying, hey, you haven't touched your coffee for a while. It's getting cold, but it's keeping at 60 degrees. I absolutely love it. Mm. I do like a bit of black coffee every so often, but I do forget it when I'm distracted with my son or just distracted with work or anything like that. But it's nice to know when I chuck it in here, it keeps it hot. So uh, maybe a little recommendation that I think might, you know, make some people happy. Not cheap though, 150 I think. Ooh. Now this automation is a RoboVac. Now this was sent to me and I've continued to use it because I really like it. But originally I purchased my own to make videos about and you don't have to spend as much to get the performance out of something like this. I've seen and I've recommended to friends and family around $600 to $700 for a standalone robot that just goes into a charging stand here. This one here empties itself and it cleans the water. That is kind of that over the top premium stuff, but if you want something to vacuum, well, you can just get a standalone one from either Roborock or Ecovac. So that's the two brands I recommend. And honestly, I really like it. It has an integration with Google. I can tell Google to start the robot and it does its job really, really well. Obviously, depending on the device. But the fact that I, in this case, don't have to empty it and don't have to clean the mop, and I can just tell Google to do it is probably by far the best 
automation in my home. And of course you can set it on a schedule, but you do have to make sure the house is ready. There's nothing on the floor, maybe all the toys are removed, and anything that's too large for this that it can get stuck on like cables or anything like that needs to be removed anyway. So it's kind of like a dishwasher in a roundabout way, but you don't have to pack the dishes. So I really like it. This right here is probably the most interesting automation we have. If my son drops any food on the floor, this black thing right here cleans it all up really quickly and efficiently, and the floor is always spotless. Hey, <laughs> good, good dog, good dog. This is a Eufy door lock. It's basically a dead bolt that pops out on this side, but has a keypad on the other side and a key in case the batteries die and you need to open it. It takes double A's, which is perfect because I don't really want to get specialty batteries or like a charging bag that you recharge. But I've gone through two other different brands, I don't need to name them, but Eufy has kind of been the best one. Now it's not connected to the Wi-Fi. It is Bluetooth only because you need another Wi-Fi bridge that costs like $150, which makes no sense, or you buy the more expensive version. But this is Bluetooth only. You connect it to your phone, set the pin code, set the people up. You can have different pin codes for different people. And that's it. And you install it, it comes with all the instructions. And if you go to Bunnings, you can get all the tools to set it up. I love it. I never forget my keys anymore because I don't need to bring them with me. It's really easy to open up. It has a fingerprint sensor and a keypad, which means that if you want somebody to come in, you can just say the code instead of the fingerprint. But when you're holding a whole bunch of things, it's much easier just to use your thumb with a fingerprint. Here it is from this side. You put your finger on and it opens up and it closes. Works really, really well. Highly recommended. Bought it myself. Haven't done a video on it. I think it's really simple. Works well. 60 bucks off Amazon and it's literally just to control the garage door. So a lot of garage doors don't come with automation or an app or anything like that. And when they do, it's really expensive. It's another add-on and it's a couple of hundred dollars that you go on top of the already very expensive motor that you might get. This thing is 60 bucks and it has a cable that hangs off. I mean, it's not looking great, but it hangs off and it has a little magnet right at the end near the door and it knows when it's open and closed, gives me warnings. I can use an app to open and close it. But most importantly, I can use Google and say, hey, Google, open the garage door and it opens, which is great. Now, it does actually ask for a passcode, a four digit code when you're talking to the Google. So that's also a good thing. So nobody can just go into your home and like shout through the window and say, hey, open the carriage door. So we're back where we started. That is the extent of my home tech and automation. We've got a curtain that opens automatically at a certain time. We've got a robot vac that you can control through voice. We've got Google Home. Uh, we've got a garage that you can open. You can also get plug switches, which are pretty cool. They have a button on either side and you can turn them on and off or you can control them through the app and they actually work really, really well. I had this one, which is why it's so dirty, controlling a pump outside, but then I stopped using the pump because it was winter and I never reconnected and I've been doing it manually. There's also light bulbs that you can install that have a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi component inside and that's really cool because you don't need a hub potentially, unless it's Philips, but I find all of them always disconnect because you're always switching the light on really quickly and turning it off. And that means the thing turns on and off inside. And when you do that too many times, I feel like the connection disappears and you gotta redo it all again. So I don't use any of those light bulbs that have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. I think it's too frustrating. You can also get these little robotic arms with a finger that presses buttons for you, especially if it's a manual device, like let's say a coffee machine. Now I've tried one of those, and again, I come to the conclusion that every time I have to press a button, it's more likely I have to go up and actually set something up before I press the button. So it's become, again, redundant. So my thoughts on about automation, there are a lot of cool and exciting things out there, but I think the reality is very, very small. I think curtains are a pretty interesting one and I know they've been around for a long time. There's other automations that, so you know, there's ones that already are built into the wall and things like that. But ultimately I think it's a very small slither 
of technology out there that is actually worth spending money on because I think it's a gimmick at some point and then you'll never use it again and the stuff that you do actually use, that is the stuff that's actually worth it. Now, that's what I use. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know what else you guys use in your home. I'd love to know. Just wanted to share what I do in mine. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.